put this in perspective, and Tracy was outlining it here, there are about uh, 387 of these uh, particular bike models out worldwide, 74 MAX 8s flying the U.S. alone. Uh, but here's the thing that could be a big deal. Um, the fact that there are orders exceeding 4,000 600 of these planes over the next decade and virtually every major airline on the planet is an interested customer so what happens to that we've already heard from democratic senator Diane feinstein that she thinks the better part of valor would be to hold off investigate ground these planes and be on the safe side that is an opinion shared uh by mitt romney the former presidential candidate now utah senator so what do you want to do and have to do if you don't want to be on a plane like this well that can prove easier said than done Aviation journalist Seth Kaplan with us right now. Seth, I mean, just because you get wind that the particular flight you're planning is, is one of these jets in question of X-8 doesn't necessarily mean that they can't swap out a plane or get your different plane or all of a sudden it's swapped out with another Max 8 right? Exactly, Neil. That's how it works. And, you know, for perspective, because, look, people have asked me, would I get on one? The answer is, yeah, i get on one because there have been a quarter million Max 8 flights. I just checked that a few minutes ago. It's uh, DO schedule data uh, since this plane started flying. And obviously, we'd ha we've had two disasters, and that's too, too many. I'm a little surprised that uh, the, how slowly the FAA, uh, Boeing, and the airlines are, are moving here as sort of the, the cost of grounding them goes down because so many of them are just kind of de facto grounded around the world. But as a customer, look, there's the flat tire rule. Uh, you know, you show up late with at least these airlines that are that are using the MAX. So we're talking here, American Southwest in the U.S., Air Canada, WestJet, United flies the MAX 9. You show up late for a flight, you miss the flight. Uh, generally, they're just going to put you on the next flight where there's a, an available seat. But as you said, no guarantee that that one uh, won't be a MAX as well. You know, well, the one thing that is curious, though, Seth, is uh, what you do if you feel, as a customer, a little bit leery of, of flying on this particular plane. I know what you're saying, and I know the odds right now, even though this was involved in yeah. two eerily similar crashes, doesn't necessarily mean that they're at all connected. But if you just want to feel on the safe side, it's not as if airlines are going to cut a break for you or allow you to swap out. Um, so that would be a lot easier said than done, right? Yeah, and, and that's right now they're taking the position that, that, that it's safe. You know, that's that's what they're saying. And look, I believe that they believe that because there's so much risk to being wrong here. Nobody wants to be the person that's wrong. On the other hand, you know, what we've seen here in the past five months, these two crashes with a brand new type, two, no, the two big disasters in, in the world, uh, you know, have both been this, this one kind of plane that makes up, what, less than 1% of the global fleet. You can't blame people for being worried, and you can't blame other countries and airlines for doing what they've done. So, again, yeah, as long as they're taking the position that it's safe, I I kind of don't think they're going to, on the other hand, put out some kind of a, a policy saying that, that you don't have to fly one, which is not to say that at the airports more quietly that agents aren't kind of, uh, you know, maybe using some judgment. Again, it, you know, if you were to show up late for a flight, if you happen to know that the next one to where you're going is not a MAX 8, it would probably be kind of like you, you got a flat tire on the way to the airport and they'd probably just stick you on the next flight where there's availability, which, you know, that's obviously taking a different kind of chance. Yeah, you're rolling the dice on, on a lot of matters there. Uh, thank you very, very much, my friend. Seth Kaplan joining us. You got it, Neil. Uh